This is Tom Fox. For the next series of episodes, Ronnie Feldman and I do things a little bit differently. I pose a question to Ronnie, and he gives us a hot take, and we explore from there. These episodes are a little bit shorter, but they're a lot of fun. I know you'll enjoy them. Before we get started, we're going to have a quick word from our sponsor, and we'll be back with Creativity in Compliance. Where does creativity fit into compliance? In more places than you think. Problem solving, accountability, communication, and connection. They all take creativity. Join your hosts, Tom Fox and Ronnie Feldman on Creativity and Compliance, part of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again with Ronnie Feldman for another episode of Creativity and Compliance. We're continuing our exploration of some different issues, concepts, and topics, and then seeing what we can come up with to help you, the compliance practitioner, implement them. So, Ronnie, here's the concept I want to pitch to you and then ask you um, to explain it. It is the following. Is it easier to be brave when you're not alone? And Amy Poehler. Yes. So Amy Poehler is a famous alumni of, uh, of the Second City and Improv Olympic and the Upright Citizens Brigade and Saturday Night Live. Um, she made that quote, it's easier to be brave when you're not alone. And she was talking about improvisation. And what she meant was um, that when improvisers are making up uh, scenes and comedy on stage, they're doing it as an ensemble as a, and as a group. And one of the ways they they do that successfully is they could create an environment of support where the group feels uh, uh, supportive of each other, that they feel like they can trust each other, and that frees up their creativity to take risks on stage. Um, and that's where the magic happens because you're not up there like a stand-up comedian by yourself telling jokes. You're out there with a group literally making it up in front of an audience. You're, you're, you're building and flying the plane uh, on stage, uh, you know, while you're, while you're in the air. Um, so there are obvious tie-ins to speak up culture and psychological safety. Um, when I think about it's easier to be brave when you're not alone, um, people don't speak up when they don't feel supported. Um, the whole concept of psychological safety is that, uh, you know, People so often revert back to the mean, and the mean is that they don't like to bring up bad news. You know, most people like to please their boss. And so uh, to be in an environment, uh, a psychologically safe environment, you feel safe enough to bring problems forward. Uh, this is an area that we as a compliance profession should be spending even more time on. It shouldn't be, uh, in my opinion, um a small part of the program. It should be the most biggest, uh, the most biggest, the biggest part of a program. Um, which is, so if you start thinking of it that way, how do you create a supportive environment where people can feel brave enough to, you know, risk all the things that they risk to bring problems forward? You have to make them feel safe. How do you do that? Well, you can't certainly do that as just an ethics officer because there's a cut, only a handful of you and there's lots of them. So it makes me think that the most important job of an ethics compliance group is less about training and more about influence. How do you get other people to uh, support the idea that we're the kind of company that does things the right way? And when bad things go down, we talk about it and we don't bury our problems. Uh, I mean, the, so how do you do that? You you have to spend a lot of time um, Getting the positives where you have a support system in place and speaking up is what we do. You have to get that out more frequently. Um, and I, I, you've heard me make the argument before, the best way to get things out more frequently without message fatigue is to be interesting and playful and positive because you can get higher rotation on those messages and you can put them in more places. And the second half of that is we have to get leaders involved and other members of the company involved, like ethics ambassadors or find other ways to get the rest of the company to carry these messages forward uh, on your behalf and on the company's behalf. 
Uh, and the best way to get them to do that is to make it simple, easy, and fun. Um, so as you really want, uh, I hate using the word policing, but you really want the group to police itself. So when bad things go down, people are like, ah, I don't know about that. You want people, you, you want group think to be positive, not negative, not like that's how we do things here. It's okay. You deserve it. Um, so to wrap that up, uh, you know, we have to create an environment uh, where people don't feel alone about these things when they have when they have a support system, they're much more likely to uh, uh, have a positive outcome um, and to to reach out for advice and to take a, a quote unquote risk by bringing bad news forward if you've created that support system. And scene. So let me pick up on um your improv training, because you've said something a couple of times now, but you really honed in on it in this episode, Ronnie. In an earlier episode, you said that you need to always remember in communications, it's not simply giving a message, it's how's that message received. In a speak up culture, how do you or can you use the same um, strategies and tactics that you would use uh, in training for speak up to train middle managers to listen, to hear that message, uh, to receive that communication from the employee who has ha- had the courage to step forward and say something. Is that something that uh, improv or the training you've received or have given in improv, is that something that uh, compliance professionals might be able to use to help middle managers be better receivers of information? Well, so you tapped into something there that I, I- – that I love, which is it's all about restructuring how we structure compliance programs. And to me, it's less important to do an annual trackable training. And it's much more important to do short communication awareness and then to spend time with leadership, educating them and and providing them with resources so that they are more likely to receive those messages and to encourage speak up. So Yes, there is some improv improv training is a technique to get people to be better listeners and to be more uh, approachable and to work on rapport and trust Um, there. But whatever, whether it's that kind of training or any other kind of soft skills training, um, I do believe that that's an area that we should be focusing more time on Um, getting your leaders involved in understanding psychological safety, the impact they have the resources that are available and how to encourage that. And then part B of that is then getting them to uh, uh, actually do some of the quote unquote training and communications. Um, so it's not coming from you. It's coming from them. I, my, I began my career in consulting and I uh, had a, one of the partners of my firm would say uh, in this firm, it's see one, do one, teach one. So, you know, you'd show me something, uh, I'd have to do it myself the next time, and then I have to teach somebody else. And I feel like this is the same way. So we have to educate leaders. Uh, we have to make them, um, you know, carry these messages forward. And I guess I'm combining, you know, do one and teach one. But the point is, at some point, you want them to uh, build this into their regular regiment of communications and training with their team. They're constantly infusing the idea of speaking up the support system. They're saying it frequently. So what a compliance team could do is make that really easy for them, package things up for them. So train them and then make it easy for them to carry it forward. Uh, so you, once again, Ronnie, you've given, uh, I think, the uh, compliance professional a lot uh, to think about. Um, kudos. So uh, you want to say goodbye to everybody, Ronnie? All right. Bye. We'll see you next time. Uh, be creative out there. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Creativity and Compliance. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe and leave a review. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.